These videos serve as some bite-sized materials for you to revisit some of the important areas and concepts that we have talked about in Project Manager Accreditation Training for NEC for ECC. Some of you want me to talk about pain share gain share mechanism. And this pain share gain share mechanism is one of the most important concepts that you must understand when you go through the accreditation training and become a competent project manager in NEC for ECC. So let's do that. Pain share gain share mechanism where in the contract says so? The contract says so under option C and D. They are the target contracts. In option C, it's under clause 54.1. In option D, it's under clause 54.5. And let me just use option C as an example. And I will do it this way. I will open up a, a whiteboard and I will explain the concepts. And after that, I will read the whole contract clause. And by that moment, you should be able to understand. Otherwise, if I read the contract clause first, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. The language in there is a little bit tricky to understand. So let's do that. So option C, option D, they are the target's contract. Obviously, we have the target. So let's call this light the target. Let's say option C, option C. Option C, what is the target? The target is the total of the prices. Now, if you struggle to understand what is the total of the prices, the meaning of the prices, and then you mix it up with defined cost and fee, and then uh, price for work done today, and sometimes activity schedule, sometimes bill quantities, I do have another video to talk about these basic elements. If you are taking the accreditation course, you must understand all these terminologies before you go to the assessment. So I, I assume everyone understands what is the total of the prices now. We compare this target with something. Let's call that something the price for work done to date. That is how we pay the contractor, by the way. Amount deal equals price for work done to date plus or minus. So we compare the price for work done to date with the target. If the price of work done to date is lower than the target, of course, this is gain. And the contract says, let's share the gain. If the price for work done to date is higher than the target, which is the total of the prices, as calculated under option C by the activity schedule, then this is pain. The contract says, let's share the pain. And that is the reason why we keep saying option C, option D, they have a pain share, gain share mechanism. This is the gain that we are talking about to share. If we say we share the gain, how? For example, share the gain 50-50%. So 50-50 split. You, the client, give, get 50%. I, the contractor, will get 50%. And that is what we call the share percentage. Share percentage. If we are talking about share percentage, a percentage of what? A percentage of what? A percentage of a certain range. What range? The gain. So what is the gain here? The gain here is from the PWDD to the target. Let's say the target is 100 pounds. The PWDD here in this case is 70 pounds. Then this 70 pounds to 100 pounds, we call that, we call this range, the share range. Therefore, we have a share range. We have a share percentage. However, NEC does something differently. Instead of using an absolute number, they say 70% to 100%. Instead of 70 pounds to 100 pounds. And we call that 70% to 100% the share range. They call that the 50-50 split here, the share percentage. And therefore, if you go to contract data, part one, you will see everything expressed in percentages. And that is where the confusion comes from. But if we think about this, this is not exactly that difficult to understand. It's just a way of presentation. Then you will ask, why do we need to use a percentage 
for the target, uh, I mean for the, for the share range instead of an absolute number? The answer is the target will change. The target being the total of the prices will change. If we use an absolute number, we may go into some, some of the troubles when we want to manage this pain share gain share mechanism. And therefore, we want to set the target, even though it's changing, we set it as 100% and compare that with the PWDD. And let's share the pain or whatever pain and gain in between. By the way, the target, the total of the prices, can be moved by a number of things. There are three, potentially four. Three, potentially four. The first three, I will explain. First one, compensation events. Second one, acceleration. Third one, acceptance of defects. If we are talking about ECC, then we do have acceptance of defects. The fourth one, we cannot control. The fourth one is inflation. What I'm trying to say is, due to these four factors, the target will change. The total of the prices will change. And therefore, we need to express the share range as a percentage instead of some absolute number. That is the reason why. So that's the basic level. Let's move one level up. NEC sets Instead of using one range, let's divide this share range into different ranges. For example, once again, we have the target, which is the total of the prices. And we have price for work done to date. Let's divide the range into different ranges from 70% to 100%, dividing that into 70 to 80%, 80 to 90%, 90 to 100%. And do not forget the last one, more than 100%. And therefore, we have different share ranges instead of one. Then for each share range, you have one share percentage. Let's say... From 70 to 80%, you share 50-50, for example. Then 80 to 90, you share 60-40. Then 90 to 100, you share 80-20, for example. And then uh, more than 100, for example, 90-10. And in the contract data, you may specify whether that 90 belongs to the contractor or belongs to the client. It's all up to the contract drafter to define how to share the uh, pain and gain within that share range by a certain share percentage. And therefore, we have multiple share ranges and multiple share percentages. So the R here is the range. The percentage symbol here is the share percentage. And that is another basic concept that we need to understand. And therefore, and therefore, this share percentage and share ranges can be so flexible, allowing the client to manage their risk under NEC for ECC. But sharing the pain and gain, we can motivate the contractor to achieve a lower cost. And that is the original intention of NEC for ECC option C and D. Practically speaking, a lot of clients will cap their pain. What does that mean? What does that mean? By capping the pain, it means, let's say, if the PWDD is above 100% and it is now 150% now, then we still have one more share range here from 100 to 150%, another share range. And they will say, whatever above 100%, then the contractor is going to take 100% of the pain. And the client is going to take 0% of the pain. 
So let's say on the left-hand side here, this is the contractor. On the right-hand side here, this is the client. And this is what we call capping the pain. And it's very common in this industry. And that is the pain share gain share mechanism. Now, if I go to read clause 54.1, then you should now understand now. Let me read that out. Clause 54.1, it says something like that. On page 36 of the contract, it says, the project manager assesses the contractor's share of the difference between the total of the prices and the price for work done to date. The difference is divided into increments falling within each of the share ranges. So you see, we have 70% to 80%, 80% to 90%, different increments. So we call that sharing, share ranges. And it says, the limits of a, of a share range are the price for work done to date divided by the total of the prices expressed as a percentage, which is why the total of the prices is the baseline. The total of the prices is the 100% that we have talked about. The contractor share equals the sum of the products of the increment within each share range and the corresponding contractor share percentage. And therefore, you have one share range, one share percentage, another share range, and other sharing percentage. You multiply them and add them up together. So what does that mean? For each share range, you multiply with the share percentage. And other share range, you multiply with another share percentage. You add them all up. And that is what we call the contractor share here. And that is what it means under clause 54.1. I hope you now understand. Help me a little bit. Just click that notification button and subscribe button. And that will help this algorithm to spread this video around and help people to understand NEC for ECC. If you want me to talk about any other topics, just let me know. And I am more than happy to make these small videos to help everyone throughout the NEC for ECC accreditation journey. Thank you very much.